the F-4 Phantom is one of the most iconic aircraft of the last 100 years. Entering service in the early 1960s, it became a symbol of the Vietnam era, and it has even forged a combat record into the 21st century, seeing recent use against the Islamic State as late as 2016. The only thing more impressive than its service history is the rather colorful display of nicknames it has garnered. Despite breaking numerous world records, including ones for speed and altitude, the F-4 Phantom is a rather large and bulky aircraft, leading to names like Lead Sled and, my personal favorite, the Flying Brick. As of 2021, F-4 Phantoms are still in service with Iran, Greece, Turkey, and South Korea, which continues to operate its F-4s even as its fifth generation F-35s enter service. Speaking of the F-35, there's a question about the F-4 Phantom that I feel needs to be answered, because there's a certain aspect of the Phantom that has become a common criticism of the Lightning II. That question is, was the gun the solution? This is a topic that has gained traction over the past few years, and has been a staple with critics of the F-35, since the Lightning II puts an emphasis on BVR combat. It is especially prevalent in conversations about the B and C variants, which are designed without internal guns, rather relying on missiles and an optional gun pod. The criticism goes something like this. The F-35B and C are ill-equipped for combat due to their over-reliance on BVR missiles. Since BVR missiles are unreliable, they need a gun to fall back upon. The evidence that is usually cited to support this is the early combat performance of the F-4 Phantom during the dogfights of the Vietnam War. They typically go on to say that the F-4 Phantom had a mediocre combat record because they solely relied on missiles for dogfighting. It was only after the M61 Vulcan cannons were introduced on the F-4E that the Phantom began improving in dogfights. Thus, it was the gun that was the solution to the problem. Therefore, since the F-35B and C primarily rely on BVR missiles, they are ill-equipped. Before I'm accused of strawmanning, as I always say on this channel, don't take my word for it. Many former F-4 Phantom pilots believe they would have performed better had they been equipped with a gun. But if I'd had a gun on that F-4, I say unequivocally, without any doubt in my mind, I could have shot down nine more bigger. Which forms the basis of the following argument. But BVR kills are still the stuff of dreams for fighter pilots, and are quite rare. In fact, the reliance on the radar acquisition and air-to-air -air missiles can prove suicidal, as indeed it was once upon a time. During the Vietnam War the U.S. Air Force was so smitten with the concept of BVR combat that the first F-4 fighters were armed only with missiles. But after it was realized that BVR missiles have a low hit probability, the Americans reintroduced cannons in the F-4. This is incorrect. As with many criticisms of a similar vein, this is a very shallow and poor explanation that fails to account for the history of the aircraft. Without even mentioning the folly of comparing missiles from 50 to 60 years ago to postulate how they will perform today, this answer only looks at one branch of the U.S. military, that being the U.S. Air Force. It completely ignores the other major branch, the U.S. Navy. First of all, we must answer this question. Why was the F-4 Phantom designed without a gun? Was it because the U.S. was leaning towards BVR combat, as the video by Defense Update suggests? The answer is no. The reason why the F-4 was not initially equipped with a gun is because it was designed not as a fighter, but as a naval-based interceptor. Most interceptors were designed without guns, relying on missiles and rockets to take out their target. The F-102 Delta Dagger, Su-9, Su-15, Tu-128, MiG-25, and the CF-100, to name a few, were all interceptors, all of which were designed without guns. Now, this does not mean that exceptions didn't exist, but this shows a very clear trend. Even proposed interceptors, such as the CF-105 Avro Arrow, were being designed without a gun. So what really happened? Was the gun the solution for the F-4 Phantom? Were the missiles themselves unreliable? As with many myths, this is based in some truth. During the opening stages of the Vietnam War, gunless F-4 Phantoms maintained a kill-to-loss ratio of only 2 to 1 across the USAF and the US Navy, using only air-to-air -air missiles when pitted against MiG-17s and MiG-21s. This led both the USAF and the US Navy to search for solutions to the underperforming missiles. But both came up with different answers. 
the USAF concluded that a gun would fix the problem, and thus introduced the F-4E, which was armed with an M61A1 Vulcan cannon. The Navy, however, took a different approach. In 1969, the US Navy created what was then called the Fighter Weapons School, but you and I know it as Top Gun. This program not only improved the training with the missiles, but also made sweeping changes to how the missiles were maintained. So what was the solution? Was a gun truly the answer, as many people believe? The f 4s primary problem was that it had no built-in cannon. Instead, it relied entirely on newly introduced air-to-air -air missiles. The radar-guided AIM-7 Sparrow, the heat-seeking AIM-9 Sidewinder, and the older AIM-4 Falcon. The Air Force didn't realize those early missiles were terrible. I'll let the numbers speak for themselves. After the implementation of Top Gun, the US Navy's kill-to-loss ratio using only missiles went from 2 to 1 to nearly 13 to 1. The USAF's kill-to-loss ratio, however, even with their gun-laden F-4Es, had not only stagnated, but had actually worsened at some points. The problem was with crew training and the maintenance of the missiles, not the missiles themselves. This is punctuated by the fact that even after the introduction of the F-4E, most of the USAF's kills were performed with missiles. Now, don't get me wrong. If an F-4 Phantom pilot were to tell me that they would have personally performed better with a gun, I wouldn't have any reason to doubt them. Pilots are human beings with different preferences, who are going to use every aspect of their aircraft to their advantage. But to claim that guns were the answer to all of the F-4 Phantom's woes is just incorrect. Now, what does that mean for the F-35, and what does that mean for BVR combat? Are BVR missiles unreliable? Are BVR engagements less common than gun kills? Is BVR combat rare in general? Some people do recognize the trends in BVR combat, but then, strangely, espouse that BVR goes out the window in actual warfare, which is just not true. According to a study by the Center for Strategic and Budgetary Assessments, air-to-air -air kills by missiles have all but replaced gun kills, with BVR air-to-air -air missile kills comprising an overwhelming portion of them. It should be emphasized that the study compiled over 1,400 examples of air-to-air -air victories from multiple countries, not just the United States. Stating that BVR missiles are unreliable is a claim with absolutely no justification especially when the evidence is a flawed analysis of events that occurred over 50 years ago. Gun combat in aerial engagements is always a possibility, but the overwhelming evidence shows that the F-35, including the B and C variants, will be well equipped, even with missiles alone. So, hopefully that cleared up any confusion regarding the F-4 Phantom, the issues surrounding its gun, and how it relates to the F-35, B and C. This is Dalek14MC, signing off.